Good morning everyone, today we're going to be talking about what is new in this update because there's actually a ton of content to cover. But before we jump into all of that, if you're new to the channel, I'll upload NGS content daily, so if you do play this game, I would really appreciate a subscribe as it really helps out the channel. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin the video. So the very first thing I want to go over is, of course, my battle power is kind of ridiculous at 3,735. This is a huge jump in battle power. And the main reason for this is simply because now our gear has six augment slots. As you can see over here that all of my armors as well as my weapon all have six augment slots. And you can also enhance your weapon all the way to plus 70. Now, getting it to plus 70 is quite the feat as it will cost a lot, a lot, a lot of enhancement material. So uh, yeah, just try to get them all to at least 61. The reason for this is because once you enhance your weapon and your armor to plus 61, you unlock the sixth slot. And as I said before, I have decided to go Dreadkeeper 4 on all of my weapons as well as my armors. And let me just show you my stats. My stats are absolutely bonkers. You can see over here that I have 1,227 HP, I have 201 Photon Power, my damage variance is 77.6% to 100%, and my damage resistance is 20%. However, all of this does come at a cost of potency. So my overall potency or my melee potency is only 101%. Sure, it's a little bit lower compared to all of the min-maxers out there, actually it's significantly lower. However, I gain a lot of stats which fits my personal playstyle a lot. The reason why I value my HP, my damage resistance, as well as my damage variant so much is simply because of the new Gigas. So all of the Gigas in the Aelio region are now level 79 and I've been hunting them down because there are new Gigas that are really really fun, especially the one in South Aelio as well as in West Aelio because there is a new Isika Bujin type of mob but uh, it's like a starless version of it and it's so Oh, so fun to fight, but it hits like an absolute truck. So for most people, if you don't really have a lot of damage resistance or a lot of HP, it can pretty much two-shot you or maybe even one-shot you. So by having so much HP and so much damage resistance, I could take four full shots from that boss and it just feels really good. Now for the damage adjustment, the main reason why I went damage adjustment is because you can see my Neo A weapon is actually a fixed attack 3. I don't have any crit chance here, so uh, there's that. But now I got a little bit carried away with my gear, so let me just show you how much it costs to enhance items. Because to get to plus 70 is going to be an absolute pain in the butt. So when we come over here, you can see here is the item lab. You're going to talk to him. We're going to go to limit break first because you need to limit break your weapons and your armors in order to enhance it past level 60. So in order to limit break your Neo A weapon, which is an 8 star rarity weapon, it's going to cost you 8 arms refiners as well as 4 arms refiners too, as well as 200,000 Masetta, all right? So just keep in mind that you are going to need arms refiners too in order to limit break so that you can enhance your gear past level 60 in order to get the 6th augment slot. Now the thing about enhancing is it is stupidly expensive. So as we can see over here, my katana is currently at enhancement level 64. When we click on it and we feed regular golden prim swords, you can see that this basically gives us 41,000 EXP and it barely moves the bar. And if you bought all of the seasonal weapons from the seasonal shop, like what I recommended, you're going to see that each of these weapons only give you 43,000 EXP and that also barely moves the bar. However, there is a new Golden Prim Sword as well as armor. As you can see over here, the Golden Prim Sword 2. Just one of these adds a hundred thousand EXP. All right, a hundred thousand enhancement EXP. This is massive. This is ridiculous on how much EXP it gives you, but look how much it moves the bar. It barely moves the bar. I need to give like five of these in order to level up once, you see? I need to use 500,000 EXP just to get half of a bar over here from enhancement level 64 to 65. However, if you look over here, it actually increases my damage significantly. It brings up my damage from 807 to 820. So you really want to enhance your weapons if you can't get a 9 star rarity weapon to drop, which is going to be the majority of players, guys. The 9 star rarity weapons, I'm going to make a separate video about them because they are absolutely cracked. If you get one, 
I highly recommend that you use it unless it's a weapon that you don't like using or you don't know how to use because the stats on those weapons are absolutely bonkers. The attack damage on those weapons is out of this world as well. So if you get a 9 star rarity weapon to drop, which I've farmed for 6 hours straight so far and I have not seen a drop, and I know just basically everyone that I know has not gotten a drop yet. So uh, if you do get a drop, just understand it's stupidly rare, it's very very hard to get, but it is so, so powerful. So for the vast majority of players, I recommend just sticking with your Neo A weapon, getting it to enhancement level 70, and that should be your baseline, and you will be able to do all of the content relatively comfortably. I know a lot of people jumped into Dark Falls Aegis as well as Dark Falls Interception when the servers first went live and literally failed every single DPS check. And the main reason for that was because everyone was still using enhancement level 60 weapons, and they didn't use their 6th augment slot, or they didn't unlock their 6th augment slot for all of their gear yet. I guarantee you, once you've unlocked your 6th augment slot for your armors as well as your weapon, and enhance your weapons to plus 70, you're going to pass the DPS track very very easily, because these 10 enhancement levels for your weapon is so so important, it gives you so much damage. So, you know, I've got a bunch of N enhancement success rate plus 100%, so I'm just going to use that to just guarantee that I get the most out of my Golden Prim Sword 2s, and you can see right here, great success, and now my weapon's attack is 820. Now regarding your armor, I recommend people just to get their armors to plus 61 on enhancement level, you don't need to go further. The reason for this is simply because it costs equally as much EXP as your weapon to enhance, so you're going to need a lot of Golden Prim armors too, but on top of that, let me just show you the the difference between enhancement level 61 and 62. All you are getting is one defense. You are literally just getting one defense. That's the only increase you're getting from increasing your enhancement. So enhancing your armor all the way to plus 70 is literally just going to give you 10 extra defense. That's it. So I wouldn't prioritize enhancing your armor anywhere past level 61. But you do want to get it to 61 because that unlocks the sixth augment slot. If it's still 60 or below and you just limit break it, it won't give you the augment slot until you get it to 61, okay? The next thing I want to remind everyone is you can actually go to exchange enhancement materials over here, other enhancement materials, and you can get Golden Prim Swords 2 as well as Golden Prim Armors 2 at the cost of 50 end grinders each. So for example, over here you can buy 10 a week, so let's say that I want all of this, that will cost me 500 grinders to get 10 of these Golden Prim Swords, but I think that is worth it because, you know, why the heck not? So that is going to be a very easy way to get your 10 Golden Prim Swords 2 as well as 10 Golden Prim Armors 2. Just keep in mind that you are going to need 500 end grinders every single week to buy out one of these, so if you buy out both of them, that's a thousand grinders every single week. Now you can farm for these very easily in the new combat zones in Alio. Just go to Mount Magnus or Vanford Laboratories rank 5 or Rezal Forest rank 4 and you will be able to get Golden Prim Sword 2s as well as Golden Prim Armors 2. Now another way is of course the Urgent Quest, Urgent Quest also drop it, so these resources are not that difficult to obtain. Alright, one more thing before I forget is actually in the Augment capsules, they have added a new Augment, it is the High Ale Domina. So this does take a Domina slot, but it is very very powerful for a Domina slot. You can get 10 HP, 4 PP, 3% potency, as well as 2% potency floor increase. This is very very good, however, Keep in mind, it costs a lot. If you look at the required materials over here, it actually requires 30 Ale Sovereigns, 100 Magnus Notes, 100 Lab Notes, as well as 100 Rizola Notes. Now the notes aren't going to be that big of a problem because everyone's going to be farming in those combat zones in order to get their 9 star rarity weapons. It's the Ale Sovereigns that's the main bottleneck. The reason for this is because the Ale Sovereigns mainly only drop from the Starless mobs. So you're going to be farming a lot, a lot, a lot. As you can see, I have 25 of them after farming for 6 hours. So it is going to take a little while to get all of them. Because remember, all of this is going to craft one capsule. You need 10 capsules because it's a 7% success rate. So if you have 10 capsules, that's a 70% chance. But that means you need 300 Ale Sovereigns and you need a thousand of each note in order for 10 of these high ale domina capsules. So this is really, really expensive, but it's very powerful. So I would say my current endgame capsules are probably going to be like Hal Finale, Mastery 4, XD Capsule, the Gigastat 4, 
the Soul 4, and then the High Ale Domina instead of the Dreadkeeper 4. I think that's what I personally would do, and probably swap out the Dust Soul 4 when I do get a better soul that I can craft. Now, speaking about the 9 star rarity weapons, they drop in specific places depending on what weapon you want. So, for example, if you're like me and you need the katana, as you can see at Resil Forest, it's going to tell you on the top right corner featured item drops. For me, it's I need to press shift to change the active window. Once I'm here, I can click this little plus button, and you can see at Resil Forest rank 4 will drop the spear, the saber, the katana, the rifle, the talus, and the harmonizer. It also drops Ale Sovereign and it drops the Golden Prim Swords 2 as well as the Golden Prim Armor 2. So if you want any of these weapons, you need to farm in Resil Forest. Now if we look at Banford Laboratory, again you can see it drops the Sword, Knuckles, Blades, Launcher, Bow, and Rod. Again, drops the Ale Sovereign, and also drops the Golden Prim Sword 2, as well as the Golden Prim Armor 2. Now, all of my Slayer mains are going to be in Mount Magnus, because over here it drops the Wire, the Daggers, the Gunblade, the Twin Machine Guns, the Wand, as well as the Boots. Also drops the Ale Sovereign, as well as the Golden Prim Sword 2 and Golden Prim Armor 2. So depending on what weapon you want, you need to farm at the specific combat zone that it corresponds with, because that is where the weapon drops. Now, I want to remind everyone, the drop rate for these weapons are extremely, extremely low. The next thing I want to talk about is the Giga Strugman Exchange Shop. So we can now farm for the Giga Strugmans. As you can see over here, I have four Giga Strugmans at the moment. In order to obtain them, you simply defeat Recon Gigantics or regular Gigantics. Normal Gigantics have a guaranteed chance of dropping the Giga Strugmans. Now, not all Gigantics are created equal. The regular Gigantics are usually going to drop one of these Strugmans, while the Starless Gigantics usually drop two. So with this update, when you defeat a Gigantics in South Alia, West Alia, or in North Alio, what's going to happen is once they die, a Starless Gigantic is going to spawn right after. And that way you get to fight two Gigantics during a storm. And it's really, really fun because if you want to spawn the Starless Gigantic, you just kill the regular Gigantic first, which hopefully shouldn't be too much of an issue. And right after you kill it, there's going to be a small animation and then boom, the Starless Gigantic is going to spawn all of a sudden. Now keep in mind, if you want to fight the special Starless Bujin, you want to go to South Alio or West Alio. I don't know what spawns in North Alio yet, so if you guys know, let me know in the comment section below. The next thing I want to talk about is, of course, our level cap has increased to level 75. Literally, it takes no effort to get to level 75. Just go to the level 70 combat zone in like 3 or 4 PSE bursts, you'll be level 75. Or if you really want to focus on leveling, you can actually use your yellow triggers. Go to the Steel Yellow Trigger, you run it for like 15 minutes, and you'll be level 75. It's very, very easy to get to 75. Now, another thing they've added into the game is, of course, the main in ores. So if you do want a map or a guide for where all the spawn locations is, please check my previous video as I show you all four spawn locations. I will leave the link to that video in the description below. Next up are a bunch of freebies. So when we go to systems over here, get campaign items, receive item account, you can see celebrating more than 11 million arcs worldwide. You can pick this up for 100 star gems as well as 10 special scratch tickets. That is very nice. However, on top of that, if you subscribe to their newsletter, you can check your email and go to item codes over here and you actually will have received a code through your email. So as you can see over here, this is the code that I received on my email. Now keep in mind, this is a one-time use. I don't think this is going to work for you, but I'm going to click send over here and you can see I got the Sonic Shoes SA2. I got two stamps, rare drop rate plus 25% as well as an EX P earn plus 25%. So I picked that up. Now keep in mind, all of those items are actually going to go to the operation team storage all the way down here. So this is where you're going to find them. So you can uh, deposit them into your regular storage or whatever. So uh, yeah, I got these shoes. That's pretty nice. Let's receive that. I think, oh wow, I already have these stamps already. So that is a little bit unfortunate. But nevertheless, I got the shoes. So I'm going to be using that. And last but not least is, of course, the two new AC scratches. We do have the AC support item select. So there are new scratches over here. This is the best one. It's going to be the XD Def Parfait capsule over here. It gives you 4% potency as well as 3% floor potency. This is very, very powerful. However, if you look at the prices, it is absolutely insane. It's at uh, 8.5 million, 9 million, and eh, you know, it's hovering between like 9.5 million around that price. So the only reason you would buy these capsules is if you want to build one set of armor that applies to all of your classes. So you don't need to switch out armors and anything. You could just have one armor and apply to everything that is where the parfait capsules come into play but nevertheless there are no critical rate xd capsules over here so yep basically uh we're still in the same meta of just building a lot of floor potency 
or you get really, really lucky and you get like a Fix of Fatale 5, and then you could just go pure potency and just crit your way to victory. The next AC scratch is, of course, the Accessory Collection June 2023. There are a lot of accessories here, and I really mean a lot. For example, MFDB Cap A. A lot of people wanted this for the longest time. This went for like billions on the base game. So if you want this, you could probably pick it up for relatively cheap now. As you can see, it's only like 3 million, 4 million in that range. The tail as well. This tail also went for a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of money. And it's still, it's still expensive, but it's more reasonable. It's slightly more affordable now. So uh, there is that. But there are a ton of really, really nice items over here. And let me just show you the balloon bosoms because I found it so funny. So there is the balloon bosom. So this is the regular booba. There is the balloon bosom B. This is another booba. There is the Japanese balloon bosom black. And then there is the SF balloon bosom white. So uh, I think it was Criticaster that made this joke. One day we're actually just gonna have an AC scratch where it's just gonna be the Balloon Bosom AC scratch, where it's gonna be like 50 variations of the Balloon Bosoms because <laughs> we have four already. Uh, <laughs> I just find it really, really funny. Special thanks to all the members for supporting the channel. It really means a lot to me. Thank you again. But yeah, that's all I wanted to cover in today's video. Hopefully you guys found it helpful. If you did, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe. And I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye!